Oh, hi! <laughs> <laughs> what a show today, man oh man. I'm pumped. I don't know, are you pumped? We're 20 seconds away. 20 seconds live. away from going live. Am I missing something here? We got everything? I have a live microphone in front of me every single week. Can you, well, like, can you believe that? Can you believe that? Uh, can you? No, okay. Catch me outside. That's what I said. Seven seconds. Seven seconds live on CHMR, Radio Player Canada, or right here. You're already here. You're don't already here. don't leave. Stay, here. stay where you are. Okay. Ready? You got it. You're in the right place. Welcome to the Mulberry Creek Hour. I'm Vicki Morgan. That means it's probably sometime around 5 o'clock. It's, actually, it's actually 5 o'clock today. It's actually 5 o'clock. There was no news. news. didn't have a news break. Yeah. Which is great. No news. No news is good, good news. news. <laughs> so that's fantastic. We'll take it. So welcome to the Mulberry Creek Hour. We're here every Tuesday from 5 to 6 p.m. Honor of my life. I can't believe they let me uh, sit in front of a live <laughs> microphone and broadcast to the fives and fives. Who in... the fuck it? So they used to call it VOCM Valley. Where, where you can broadcast VOCM, and of course VOCM is like the most powerful station, probably, you know, it broadcasts everywhere. So I don't know what our CHMR range is. We should come up with a little ditty, like, uh, as far as the Metrobus stop. That's how far CHMR goes, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I think how we... far out? Let us know. So we're also broadcasting... Sorry, there, there was a spot in Mount Pearl the other day. I think it was right at the intersection of Commonwealth and Ruth, where yeah. the where the um, Birds is, and then I think it was like, oh, we got CHMR, and then when we started we driving... Were we up on a hill? No, it was weird, and then we started, it must have just been a reflection in the clouds or something, but we started driving, and it, and it went away. The radio god smiled on us that day in Mount so Pearl. So if you're in Mount Pearl, you can listen to CHMR on Radio Player Canada, Let which us is know what we do at our house. We don't live in Mount Pearl, but we listen to Radio Player Canada all the time, and it's always clear. It's always, it's, you can just put it right through to your uh, Bluetooth. This is not an advertisement. For this is not a promotion for Radio Player Canada. We no, are just saying that that's where you can listen to CHMR. It's just that the, the broadcast area from the actual will leave. The VOCM commercial used to be from a very big tower in a very big field, blah, blah, blah. And uh, in CHMR, <laughs> it's basically from a little pole in a, in a, in a concrete building. It's like some, some guy with if a, you're one, on of those campus. one of those TV antennas. He's just holding out the window. Um, I jest. I don't mean to mock because I really do love CHMR. And it is online. So. We're, well, we're here now and you're listening if you're That's hearing right. this. And we are on. <laughs> Let me turn around and check the wall because I don't know. We don't have Alliant or cable. But Alliant 787, which you already know if you're listening on that. And also on cable 942. I don't even know what that means. But and and uh, for those of you on uh, that are just using your listening ears on the radio, we are also on Facebook Live right now. Every Tuesday, we do a Facebook Live of our show at the Mulberry Creek Hour. Or if you're on the Ham Radio. If you're using Ham CB. Radio, we are at call sign Breaker One Nine. Charlie Wilson. Come on, big, come on back, big daddy. Four dot four two, I don't know. Talk to us, teddy bear. All that stuff. <laughs> that's CB. That's a different thing. I said we were on CB. Oh, okay, good. Can someone get me a CB? If you have one in your basement that you're not using, I'd love to be on the which truckers. What do you think the truckers are talking about today? Probably the fog. So we are on day 941 of fog in St. John's. It's what we call Capelin weather. That's where you put on a cape. Nope. 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 Okay. So Josh, I said that on the way into the studio today, and Josh said, What's Capelin weather? So for the people who are not lucky enough to be from Newfoundland, I'm not sure what happens first. There's fog and there's Capelin at the same time every single year. And we're always surprised by it. It's always like, what? Why is it foggy? Why has it been foggy for all these days? And it's like, that's the Capelin winter by. <laughs> and then, so, so the question is, do the tides bring the fish? Do the, does the tide bring the fog? Do the fish all come at the same time? I think the fish come <laughs> in and that, and do the that fish brings all, the fog like, do a, the magic, fish all arrive? like a magic mist. Do they arrive at the same time? <laughs> um, and does the does that big massive migration of fish do something to the tides? I don't know. I'm not a. The exciting marine. thing about Capelin coming in is whales, because I like to go sure. see whales, because I'm not from a whale place. Well, you were not near the water. Well, you were near a place. Uh, what was the place we went to in North Carolina? Wilmington. Wilmington, where they shot lots of TV shows. There's water there, but North there's, Carolina. <laughs> there is water there. Yeah. There's lakes and rivers and streams, and of course, Mulberry Creek is in North Carolina. We are not right now. We are Mulberry Creek the, is in the, the studio. The in Mulberry Santa. Creek. But the Mulberry Creek that we're named after does exist in North Carolina, in Lenore. And you drive down this road, and it turns to dirt, like, while you're driving on it. it goes, <laughs> and it says, pavement ends. And unlike in Newfoundland, you don't have to worry about plowing snow and stuff in the, snow, in the wintertime, because they don't have any. It's amazing. Hot all the time. We put up Christmas decorations one year in t-shirts. Now, Josh did that this year as well, but that's just because he's... Hot natured. I'm hot natured. Hot Listen, natured. Uh, let's play some let's music. Get, I am so excited about the show today. <laughs> I had a conversation with people last week. I got some friends in from, uh, we had a little little high school reunion, an unofficial high school reunion, so don't feel bad if you weren't invited. Um, it wasn't official. It just happened. Um, I, I was invited. I didn't even go to your high school. That's right. 
But our, our friend Renee uh, Hand, who we adore, absolutely love Renee. She's in town, and so she um, invited a handful of people. And we were like, oh, my God, I didn't know you'd be here. It was awesome. And so we were having a conversation about, it might have just been me. I don't know. Was anyone participating in this party? Anyway, you were just talking away for hours at the wall. I was. Yeah. Okay, at home. My throat was right dry. <laughs> Um, but I was talking about the stuff that I like listening to in high school and they were like, I didn't even know you played music. And that's so funny to me because I didn't tell anyone I played music. I used to go home and listen to John Conley and Charlie Pride and, uh, VOWR, like at my, at my, all my relatives, my Uncle Hubert's house, my Aunt Joss's house, my Uncle Arch's house, Uncle Freeman, all of them, we had VOWR on. We listened to, we listened to the new country at the time, which was John Conley, Reba McIntyre, um, George Strait. Oh my God, did mom love George Strait? She's still alive. She loves George Strait still. <laughs> she did then. But also. I freaking loved old country music. And I don't know why. I was so embarrassed. I was so afraid that somebody um, would uh, would find out what was in my Walkman on the bus. Like I would have, I just had panic attacks. You had, a, you had a Walkman? I did. So that my, I was terrified that my Walkman would like drop on the ground and John Conley tape would fall out. How ridiculous is that? Were my tapes, love of were music. The, were the tapes recorded off the radio? Uh, I no. had a bunch of those when I was a kid. I mean, they, those two. I think it was hand. I pictured John Conley written on the tape in pen, it, but it was it was recorded from an actual. Someone had a copy of it. I don't know. We didn't have a lot of money, which I was also hyper embarrassed about back then because it was like, oh my god, what if people find out I don't have money? And then it was like we found out nobody had money. There was a handful. <laughs> there was a handful at my high school that had. Uh, you know, so, you know, well over ten dollars. No, there was like we had actually some of the richest kids in the province. Um, went to went to Gonzaga, which is kind of a lot of disparity there. And high school wasn't even, but it was all my life. I was really embarrassed about the fact that I played at my, um, that I played country music and I love country music. And so anyway, in a, as a tribute to little me, I'm still not that big, but um, <laughs> I am growing. Which brings me to another point we'll get back to after these couple of songs. But uh, is anybody else hitting that plateau? Genetically or, or what? Ge not geographically. What's the word? <laughs> <laughs> Biologically. That's it. Biologically speaking, where you just go, man, everything. I used to hear people talking about this, and I go, that's never going to talk. That's never going to happen to me. And man, oh man, did I find myself at Valley Village this weekend looking for bigger pants. Does that happen to you? Anyway, speaking on a of, if, note, you're, if you're lucky enough to be seeing us on the Facebook Live right now, you can see that Vicky has uh, one of her own homemade hats, yes. of which she has made a pile. Piles and piles of hats and piles and piles of dishcloths, and here's why: because they're quick things, and I can see the result, and it helps me with stress and uh, you know OCD management. So I did find out this weekend how to make banquet paints. Oh my god, <laughs> banquet paints! I love it. That was a, a, a elastic. Ala someone just made a comment on the Facebook Live. Brenda, you're awesome. Banquet paints, exactly. Elastic waistband, so you don't have to worry about. I think that's what it means. Anyway. Hats and dishcloths, I did figure out this week how to make labels to put on there. And they are going to have, I'm going to have a big reveal later on the show. But we also have the most amazing guest coming up, Derek Strong. How much do we love Derek? Oh my God. Derek's pretty great. He's amazing. Yeah. So we're going to kick it off with the song that was on my heart this morning uh, when I got up. And by that, I mean one o'clock this afternoon. Um, no. This song, I came into the kitchen singing it and Josh looked at me like, are you okay? He's a little <laughs> bit, he's a little bit weirded out when I'm... Hopping around the kitchen. But anyway, this is the song I was singing. I only had one line in my head. Mountain of love, mountain of okay, love. And I didn't know the rest of the words. So here, we're going to share. We'll let Charlie sing this one. This is Charlie Pride, Mountain of Love. Live this, performance. Is, this is a live performance. This is a great one. This is from 2015, before he died. I mean, obviously, <laughs> yeah. obviously he didn't it sing it after he died. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> anyway, we're happy that he was around. Anyway, here's Charlie Pride, Mountain of Love. Let's listen to a second of it. Right. I don't know the words. Talk to you. I people. just know the chorus. Listen, you gotta stop bumping me. <laughs> stop banging into my. I don't have a name for this guitar. What are we gonna call her? We should call her Allen, A L L Y N. So this that I can say. We gotta do some more Canadian content because this is. Um... We're going to play some more songs. Yeah, we're going to play more songs. We're doing two two American songs. Yes, we are going to do that. And I have some I have some uh, news that I'm going to share to you when we come back. You know what? I'm going to do it right now because they don't need to see this on the radio. What don't they need to see on the radio? Oh, Peter took my, my board. I'll be no, back. it's right here. It's right here. Oh.
great. You're doing great, honey. Sorry, I'm just sending them some. This is the this is the Mulberry Creek camera. Hold on. Shout out to Freeman. Awesome. Shout out to who? Freeman. Shout out to Freeman. Man, I miss kitchen parties. I miss dancing with my Uncle Freeman. Let's go to the thing. I want to show you. Oh, All will be revealed. Look at him rocking out. He's 95 years old. Mm -hmm. What are we doing after this? Um, I don't know. Play some John Conway if you want. I do have John Conley queued up. Or we can play some. We can play some more Canadian stuff because we got. I don't know what the rule is for Canadian stuff. So we can hear this in the studio. Hopefully, they can't hear on Facebook Live. What? This song. <clears throat> because the estate of Charlie Pride should get so can fees. Yeah. I'm out of breath. See, age, geography. Whew. I'm beat. Only ten minutes in. I guess all I got, folks. Take it away, Josh. How much time we got? I saw I saw I saw a video uh, trailer for a show on Netflix, and there these, these ladies were doing a Facebook live, and they were like, "The eye icon says zero and they're like, "Yeah, we're by ourselves. Nobody's watching." <laughs> Listen, that's not is, the case right we now. We get in the thousands of views after the thing is over because people are busy. Five o'clock, man, you should have seen the face of Charlie Pride today. He's having a blast. Okay, I okay, get, okay, hang on. I get yeah, are we coming back? back? Are we talking? No, not yet. We're playing another song. Don't be cutting Charlie off. I'm gonna come back and talk about. My so week. we're coming back after this. <laughs> Look at them all standing up. How awesome is that? Isn't it nice that everybody celebrated Charlie Pride when he was here? You know, we used to come here a lot. He did, yeah. He, he liked did. He liked My Newfoundland. family loved Charlie Pride. We were lucky enough last year to see his brother, Vincent, Danny, Stephen, Billy, Stephen, Stephen Pride. Was it Charlie's brother? That's Charlie's what I call brother. Him. That's what I call him anyway. Charlie's brother. That's a sin. His name is Steven, and I did get a picture with him. It was on my birthday last year. So. Yeah, Steven Pride, Charlie Pride's brother. Yeah. He was awesome, and I said, I'm so happy to meet you. It's my birthday. And he went, it's her birthday over there, too. And <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about not staying out in the crowd. And he was like, yeah. He was lovely. He was really lovely. He just wasn't that impressed that it was my birthday. <sighs> oh, well. Anyway, how was your week, Josh? Uh, good. Listen, we got a we got a guest coming on pretty soon. We he's gotta, coming um, in in a few minutes. Derek Strong, stick around. He's friggin' awesome. He's awesome. We keep the universe keeps putting us in the same place. How funny is that? Derek was out for his birthday last night at the embassy downtown, and we are open to ice cream sponsorships. Just so yeah, the embassy boys we, know, we, we will accept payment in just custard cones. From we will we will accept sponsorship in the form of coupons for custard cones. Because Maybe one of those nice shirts that Derek had. <laughs> Or the puppuccinos, because we like taking walks. Not puppuccinos, what are they called? Pup cones? Cups of dog, cones. Dog cones. Cups of cones. I don't know. Anyway, if you go to Lars, um, they give little uh, little tiny cups of ice cream for your dog. Which is totally, totally safe. There's no chocolate, no onions, no garlic, no uh, <laughs> uh, ibuprofen. Those are things that are toxic for dogs. Did you know that? I saw that on TikTok the other day. Anyway, ice cream, new embassy. We ran into Derek. We also saw Derek about two weeks ago at a uh, going away party for our buddy Denny, who is going back to the US and we're gonna miss her and we can't wait for her to come back. But she's not even gone yet and we already miss her, so <laughs> get back as soon as you can. Um, but anyway, Derek was out there at that party and it was fantastic and we were playing music and people were dancing in the living room. It was like old times. It was like the pandemic never happened. It was like the happened. before times. It was like the before times when people were just hanging out in the kitchen, joking around, Liv was there, our buddy, we love Liv. Oh my God, she knows who she is. Um, so we're just hanging out, just just having a great time. The kids were there, there was dogs, there was food everywhere. People were playing music and passing the guitar around and someone lost a capo. That's a whole other story. Hopefully she got her capo back. Anyway, it was a great time. Derek's coming up on the show. I want to share this because Jesus laid it on my heart. You ready for this? All right. I don't know if I should share it. All right, never mind. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I had a job interview this week, which <laughs> is kind of funny really because um i don't know i just it, i'm so far from that world of like water coolers lunch breaks you know staggering breaks scheduling vacation time like promoting we, synergy we work our butts off we really do all week like we, are, we have a lot going on and we're working constantly so the idea of like your job is going to be from 8 30 to 4 30 is like are you what are you what do you do after that 
And I realized a couple of things. The last two interviews I've had, I think this might be where I go wrong. <laughs> when they say you're going to be working a 35 or 40 hour work week and they tell me what the job entails, I say, because I, you know, get into the zone and share my honest self because I don't like living any other way. I say things like, does it take you 35 hours to do the accounting for son of a creech? Like, why do you need 35, why do you need 35 hours a week to do that? Like, what? and so that's not what I, I interviewed for that last year. And I think that might be why they didn't call me back because I was like incredulous. Like, why do you need that much time to, and I don't know, I don't know what people do in these jobs. I just feel like if, and, I, and what I, this follow up question to that was, can I bring something to work to do? Because if I have to do accounting for 40 hours a week, I would probably, um, not come not to work anymore. To. I yeah. would not want to be there. So it was a, not an ideal job. That is not the interview I had yesterday. The interview I had yesterday was for corporate training where I would be, I guess they figured because I have a master's in adult education, I would be a good fit. And they might be right. But it's kind of funny to me because that job was also a full-time job. And it's like, what do you do the rest of the time? Like busy work. I just, that idea of busy work. So I've made, as Josh mentioned, stacks and stacks of dishcloths and hats because I need to keep my hands busy because it keeps me from, I don't know. I don't know what I do if I didn't keep my hands busy. I don't want to think about it. I, it would, <laughs> there'd probably be some angry messages. <laughs> I'd probably be <laughs> one of those keyboard warriors because I need my rage to come out. But it comes out in beautiful um, ombre yarn dishcloths, which we are going to be selling um, and as, as a part of um, this other thing. that Anyway, the idea of being a coach or a trainer is comical to me. And I, if someone mentioned Someone mentioned in, in the past couple of weeks, <laughs> said I should be a life coach. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know if you're on this side of the internet as the same side I am, I am, but like all my Facebook feed, my Instagram feed, TikTok, all of it, every second post, and I get some from my friends, which I love. Most of the posts are about, do you want to make this much money in this, in this amount of time? Or yeah. I tried this and I failed, but then I did this thing. And it was, there's so many things about coaching where you can pay somebody, you ready for this? To yell at you, to say, this is what you're doing wrong. Stop doing that. Get out of bed, blah, blah, blah. And that is so not my speed. Like, so I'm going to, there's a visual component to this, but I will walk you through it. I'll explain it to you as I'm going. Okay. I brought a whiteboard with me today. And I'm going to write what I would do as a life coach. Okay. This is what you can, I'm up for hire. You can pay me to do this. Are you ready? I have absolutely no idea what's going on. I know. It's a laugh and a half with me, right? It's one of those, you know, those, um, like choose your own adventures, right? You know, where it says turn to page, whatever, if you want this answer. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So here's my, this would be me as a life coach. Okay. And uh, so this is why I wouldn't uh, make a lot of money at it because I would take what? Fif 15 seconds. Someone would call me, they have a session booked, and I would say, whatever is on your heart today, I'm trying to make a decision. I would ask this question here. Josh, do you want to read it to the listeners? Does it feel good? Okay. That's what I'd ask you. And if the answer was yes, I would say, ready for this? I'm going to write it down in big letters. Do it. Right? If it feels good, do it. And if it doesn't feel good, if your answer is no, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> There's Session over. Send me here, some but... money. That is really like the idea of coaching somebody and like telling them what they're doing wrong. Not into that. I don't. I don't do that. Uh, as a rule, I do it to myself a little bit. But like the, the idea of me being a facilitator and coach is comical. I don't know. I don't know. I think you'd be fantastic at it. I mean, I could. I don't know. Like I don't know. I, I mean, I teach self defense and I teach child abuse prevention and those sorts of programs and stuff. But the idea of doing it for forty hours a week is like, well, what do I do with the rest of the hours? Like, right. you can't teach for forty hours. So, like, how do you keep yourself busy? Anyway, this is the thing that's on my heart because I realized that the last two interviews I've had in the last year, maybe longer, have have really resulted in me saying, um, "What do you do for all those hours? Like, really, <laughs> how do you fill your time?" And you're just like. And I saw a TikTok video. I think this is the answer. We're going to bring Derek in in just a few minutes. If you're waiting for Derek, stick around. He's coming. I promise. <laughs> but it was a TikTok video, and it was basically how millennials do. Because this is the new world, right, of people working from home. And you're, you leave your status up as active all the time so that you look like you're active to your boss, which is how we did it back in the day. Josh sure. was in the military. I was. I had, I mean, I wouldn't say hundreds, but it's up in the 50 or 60 different jobs. Uh, I, I worked as a secretary. Can you believe that? Can you picture me sitting still at a desk going, hello, 
this is, and I would have to look at the piece of paper underneath me to say what the company name was, because I kept forgetting, <laughs> because I changed jobs that many times as a temp. Anyway, where was I? We're going to play some music. In 40 hours doing the same thing. Who wants that noise? <laughs> now, that's not to say that I don't want that job. They can call me because it was a lot of good money and it was a good organization. But, I don't know. I, it was, I walked away from that meeting going, <laughs> anyway, life coach. Who needs a life coach? But if you want to be, if you want me as a life coach, I will call you. If you want to call me for, for hard, hard cash money, hard, hard, cold, hard money, um, I will say what's going on in your life is um, probably a little bit of BS. And that the people that are bothering you are probably not very nice people. And I would be on your side, on your team. You know those, there used to be a program years ago where you could have like rent-a-granny, where you'd like adopt a, an old person in an, in, an age, in an old age home, in a senior's home, and you would be their friend. Like you would go visit them and talk to them. Well, I would be rent-a-friend. <laughs> you can call me. I will tell you your ideas are fantastic, because they are. I would tell you that you can prob probably, you can do what you got your mind set to. If you have anything laid on your heart that you should be doing or want to have tried, it's never too late. There's always time, unless you're dead. If you're dead, don't call me. <laughs> Please. I don't have any advice for dead people. But if you're still living, I would be that person who would say, do it. Absolutely. Rent a friend. Give me a call. I will I will coach you in not giving a poop. I, will, I do. Like, that's what I have to offer. Is there is there a corporate job out there for me? Is there any way? Is that a job? Is that a job description? I don't know. Anyway, we are going to do a new another song. We're going to do a song from Derek Strong while we're bringing him into the studio. Stick around. We've got him here live in the studio. He's going to play some songs for us, and we can't wait. We freaking love Derek. So this one is um, this one is uh, Summer Sun. This is on Derek's uh, old album um, that I have been listening to, and it's freaking fantastic. Oh my god, it's amazing! So amazing. We, here comes uh, Derek Strong with Summer Sun. Oh, I'll write it backwards. Okay, we're gonna move everything around and. Mountain everything. of yep. I'm gonna write this backwards for the viewers. This is what Josh lives with all the time, in case you're wondering. All the time. Isn't he a lucky man? Just write it with your left hand. Write to friend. Be backwards. Um, you gotta move everything over, right? I will. How do you do a backwards this? Start over here. Hey, oh, that's all right. I don't mean over here. Okay. I'm writing it backwards so you can see it. The backwards is this way. Okay. And I can't do a question mark. Does, oh, that's been, look at that, writing backwards. I can also write with my left hand. I'm writing songs. Does it feel good? Answers. There's two answers. There's always two answers. Yes or no. Oops, I've got to write that backwards. Hang on. We're going to write. Uh, how do you know backwards will be on, right? So, um, N O would be N O and hold on. So, Hi Derek, I'm doing a, a life I'm doing a life coach uh, session here. Oh, okay. we're on Facebook nobody asked we me. That. Nobody asked me for it, but this is I'm on Facebook. I'm like Lisa Simpson, the question that nobody asked. Does it feel good? <laughs> no or yes. This is it. That's your life lesson. That's what every friggin' Instagram post should have on it. Does it feel good? Because why would we have emotions if you're not meant to use them? We'll get just over a minute. He's tapping me. Until we I'm come getting back. tapped. So get over on the other side. And turn the phone around. We're going to go over. We're going to start our interview. Is there a microphone over there so for me? So this is where you want me to be? Yeah, yeah. If, that's, if that's comfy, comfy Sorry, over there. Anything is good. Vicky's Thanks, microphone's over there, so go on over. So we're going to, uh, how long have we got before the show is back on the A minute, and then I'm going to do a, a minute and a half. Minute. Make sure you share the show. Derek Strong's awesome, and everybody needs to hear him. So make sure you give us a comment, give us a like, share the show. Uh, go to what's going to be on YouTube afterwards. And um, Derek, where are your CDs for sale? Uh, they're not in circulation right now. They're not in circulation. So if you got one, it's probably worth box deluxe. <laughs> Big I'm going to bring the phone over this way. Look at this. Man, oh man, technology is fantastic. I didn't play a song. Not yet. And do I sing here in the chair? Is that the idea? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, I'll adjust the microphone sure. a little bit before you play. Oh, and sounds like fun. Well, when you're talking, you can just bring it right up to your face. Uh, yeah. Where we're covering most mountain of the mountain of love. Right, 20 seconds and then I'm doing All right. So you're going to talk when we come back? Fabulous. Look at a crowd of people watching because you're here. <laughs> now, they, to be fair, they do watch every week. It's fantastic, but never at the same time. So it's like a crowd here this evening. We crowd, awesome. Yeah. Wow. We should put little cardboard, cardboard cutouts for every person that's watching. So it feels like there's a big studio audience. And did you get an app yet with applause on it? No, not yet. Do you want this board? Yes, please. What about this backwards lesson, though? 
Gotta go. I had a job interview this week for a corporate training. Oh. And it's cracking me up with me sitting still. How's that working for you? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> I could learn. For lots of people my age learn new things. <laughs> and my age. <laughs> I know that's hard to believe. I can learn fifteen seconds. I can learn new things. I don't know if I can do the same thing for this for forty hours a week. I don't know if I'm I don't know if I was ever built for that, and that's hence probably why I had multiple dozens of jobs. Okay, we're going back. Too much personality, they told me. That's fine. Welcome back to the Mulberry Creek Hour. I'm Josh Morgan. <laughs> Vicky Morgan's over there. Just chatting, just chatting away. Listen, I'm like a little lightning bug. You know, lightning, the first lightning bug that was ever ever uh, invented. You know, the first <laughs> one. Well, the first one that first was one alive that was probably like flying around, you know, doing the pollinating thing and going, man, this is a weird existence. Like, I got these wings and I can fly and I can eat dead things or whatever it does. And then one day it's butt lit up. It just <laughs> lit up and it was like, it must have went, what the frick is that? Right? Yep. What the frick is that? That's what I just said. And it was like, what What kind of a weirdo am I? My ass is lighting up. Right? So the first fire, first firefly out there and was some like... And some lady firefly was like, hey, what's, what's that? Well, and then Hello. those little fireflies out there going, look at all these other insects. These bees don't light up. They're just doing their thing, calling whatever, saving the world. The wasps are just being arseholes. And, uh, and whatever, all those insects, none of them light up. So that first firefly probably felt pretty weird, pretty lonely. And then remember the fields of fireflies that we used to see down in Maine and North I Carolina yep. when we lived in the U.S.? Absolutely the most beautiful sight you'll ever see in your whole life is a field of fireflies in the evening because they find their own, they draw their own uh, um, type, you know, their own frequency. They draw them together. And so there's these fields of all these fireflies lighting up at the same time. It's beautiful, <clears throat> spectacular. That's right. And how amazing for that firefly to realize I'm not the only one. <laughs> Which brings us to our guest. Derek Strong is in the studio today. <laughs> One of my fireflies. I absolutely love it. Derek, thanks so much for being here, buddy. Oh, it's my honor, actually. I'm a huge Mulberry <laughs> Creek fan. You know oh, that man. already. So it's it's <laughs> it's really a privilege to be a guest, honestly. We did not pay him to say that, although maybe we should. Isn't that amazing? Um, oh, my God. I just So, Derek, there's a Mulberry Creek mug right in front of you because that is a lovely parting gift we give to guests that come into the studio. We absolutely love this gig. That's amazing. Look at this. You say, you say parting gift like you've done. Like, all right, we'll see you later. Oh, Thanks for being here. We will, we, will not be, we will not be staying in the studio forever, but we make those mugs. We make all kinds of stuff. Josh found a website uh, the other day where we can make, like, custom clothing. And it was like, oh, who makes their own clothes? Uh, we do. We do. I made this shirt. Josh came up with the logo for a song that we do called That's All. And uh, that I wrote about a young man who was offshore and, and uh, said to me, anyway, it's a whole other story. I'll sing that later. <laughs> But we we make our own stuff. We're a couple of hippies, and I was like, they're just people you're just drawn to that are just there's something there, right? Yeah. Now Derek, Josh came told me before we came into the studio today. He was like, do you know what Derek used to do? And I was like, no. <laughs> he was always a musician, right? He was like, he was an RCMP officer, which I love. I mean, <laughs> thank God for in all. My, in my in my uh, looking for a. a picture to use for the poster this week. Oops. <laughs> you should have put the uniform picture in there. <laughs> How amazing is that? I'm so grateful for all the shows that absolutely glorify um, police work and law enforcement. Our favorite shows, right now we're doing our third run through Justified, which is about a U.S. Marshal. Uh, we watched all of uh, <laughs> we do, we do South love cop dramas. and Law and & Order. Oh my God, I'm in love with uh, Olivia Benson. Seriously, <laughs> I just, I had lots of police officer friends. I love, I love what you guys did and do. Like, <laughs> It's fascinating to me, the uniform, and, like, I know it's a thankless job. I know it's, like, it's a lot of, uh, you know, pushback and all that stuff, but man, oh, man, who would choose that job unless you had a heart of gold? Derek Strong. Oops. <laughs> Take it away. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> well, like, thank you for your service, first of all. Oh, my gosh. And you are retired now? Yes. Okay, you still have to rock a glorious mustache, which I believe. <laughs> Wasn't that a requirement back in the day at the RCMP? No, but, you know. Yeah, didn't a lot hurt. of that. Highly encouraged. Hurt. <laughs> it helps to be, was, was there a height requirement? Uh, no, the, it, it, a long time ago, I think. Yeah. But not when I joined. They just them. all turned out tall and gorgeous. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, were you ever on the musical ride? Was that ever a thing? No, that no, definitely Amazing. not. Amazing. The RCMP boys, you missed out because you got a brilliant musician that passed through your ranks <laughs> and you didn't even have. Now, I don't know if people play what you play on the, on the horses. <laughs> they don't. They don't play guitars on the horses in the musical ride. No, we, they, were, maybe they we were. The song we just heard was from your album. I'll be there. Yes, yep. and that was you did that all in BC, right? That's right. That's fantastic. We spent a huge portion of my career in British Columbia, and uh, I was heavy into music over there. 
uh, released this album, had some sponsors, released this album, and uh, we were going to go full time. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite a, it was quite a glorious time. Uh, and, <clears throat> and then changed our mind at the last minute, and uh, here I am today, really. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's really fascinating that you say that, because now that he's retired, uh, could you do it now? Could you go full time now as a musician? Do you think? Would you want to? Well, what does Jesus lay on your heart about that topic? <laughs> I uh, I think it would be easy to go full time as long as you know groceries were not a factor <laughs> 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 and rent and stuff. You know. Oh my God! Yeah. Is there money to be made in music? That's a really good question. There's ways to do it. I don't know what they are yet, we're but working, we're getting we're closer on. and closer. We're getting like, <laughs> and that's we started playing for fun because we wanted to play, and now things have really taken off for us for festivals and um, little little small stuff along the way, right? And then the radio show helps because, I don't know if people realize this, but we play Mulberry Creek stuff on our show every single week. So Great. there might only be one new person every week that hears a Mulberry Creek song, and maybe we're only growing our fan base one person at a time, but people are getting to know like get to know us. They're getting to know us, and it's not, I don't know if the music's any good, but they're getting to know us as human beings, and I feel like we're, we're um, meeting people that have like similar interests and similar uh, frequencies and, and what they want out of life and kind of, you know, I'd like to think we're good people. I think I'm a delight myself, but that's just one, per that's just one person's opinion. You no have bright spots, bright huge, spots. huge <laughs> bright spots, honestly. I would, say, I would honestly and, and without any hesitation say that about Josh. So I'm a little more hesitant to go, am I wonderful and who, what the hell? Let's go the for it. The answer is yes. Well, <laughs> we both have a good time and I feel like we bring out the best in each other and our kids are spectacular human beings. I know we tell them that all the time and they go, oh, whatever, mom. But it's true. We really lucked out with our kids. Our house is a little, this is a bunch of fireflies. It really, like, we light up, we laugh a lot, we have such a good time, and we don't really, we don't really go by a lot of the traditional things that, you know, kind of tie people down, hold people down, make them sad, and depressed, and all that garbage that goes along. We have a pretty good time, I think. Here, tell me about, song you're going to sing for us. So tell me about when you started writing. When, when did you write your very first song? Oh, good Lord. Well, the teenager. Oh, wow. You know, teenage boy with girlfriend must write song. You know, it just goes together. The good ones, the good ones. Yeah. yeah. No, it all started then, really. No way. Yeah. I started in a neighborhood band when I was like fourteen. This is a great story. If you have a minute, I would love to share this with you. That's what we you're have here for. all the time. So, I'm going to stop. I'm going to quite literally in grade seven. There was a neighborhood band, and I signed up for school band, and I ended up with a saxophone. So the neighborhood band said, "Oh, you play saxophone. We want you to join the band." So I went to the first rehearsal with the saxophone that I had for a week. <laughs> and it I sounded terrible, course. absolutely terrible. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know at the time, because we didn't know anything, that a saxophone's in B flat, and the rest of the band is just in concert pitch. C. Right. So I was always a semitone out on every tune we did, <laughs> and we couldn't figure that out for the life of us. So finally, after a couple of weeks of that, how do you tune this thing? You can't, you know, it was a disaster. So finally one guy said, why don't you play bass instead? I said, what's a bass? And been a bass player ever since. Wow. No way. Yeah, all because we couldn't figure out uh, that, uh, that a saxophone is tuned a semitone lower than well, at a regular well, instrument. I didn't know any of that. In fact, the people we were out with the other day, one of the ladies was a saxophone player from Concert Bay in, at Gonzaga, and uh, I didn't know Got that. transposed. I didn't know Semitone. That. Yeah, and so the, our our band instructor used to have um, an alto, like a it was a soprano sax. So it was it looked like a clarinet, but it was a saxophone. So he would play stuff for the saxophone section for the winds or whatever. They were all I don't know whatever that section was that had the saxophones in it. He would play that the pieces for them so they could. But I never knew it was because actually I'm going to correct myself for the folks at home because somebody's at home going it's not a semitone it's a full tone lower B flat right so. Oh, yeah. In C. case you get some uh, mail no, or whatever. That's right, because the C note is one of those two double white notes. That's right, yeah. Right? It's, well, listen, we're listening, we're doing this stuff at home right now. Our, our oldest son, Henry, is learning music theory. And he comes to me with stuff, and it's like, if I had known that when I was 12 years old, my life, oh man, music would have been so much easier. Because I loved it. I joined concert band in the percussion section because there was a cute drummer. I mean, that's literally what happened. They were like, oh, we were desperate for percussion players. And I was like, well, <clears throat> I heard Brendan the drummer. And they were like, yeah, if you join percussion, you could probably hang out with Brendan during concerts and stuff and during practices. So I went and I was playing the bells, which has, you know, 12, 12 little silver pieces yeah. of metal and uh, crash cymbals, which almost blew me back against the wall. 
expect. I wasn't allowed near the timpanis because there was two different notes to the timpanis. <laughs> I don't know how to drum, still can't do a drum roll, save my life. <laughs> anyway, went to a lot of concerts, played at a lot of shows as a percussionist. So the triangle was my <laughs> instrument of choice back then, because I never told anybody I played the guitar. I had no, <laughs> did not share that I played guitar. So when I found out that the jazz band, in, you know, graduation, they played, and it was like, you can play guitar in, in school band? Anyway, that's where she started. So Derek is going to play a song for us now. Tell us what you're going to play for us, Derek. Um, I think... Uh... I read all kinds of songs. We got to move this way back because I sing a little too loud for uh, it works for the folks at home. Um, I write a lot of different songs. A lot of them are finger style, uh, deeper tunes. But today, let's just have some fun today. It's a gorgeous guitar, by the way. Oh, thank you. It's yeah, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, What's this one called? Uh, this one is called "Did the Boy Ever Get the Girl." And I love it. It's not deep at all. It's just a fun tune about uh, you know a, a, a boy in love, uh, love and trying to figure out if he can worm his way into some gal's uh, frame of vision. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. <laughs> This whole thing reminds me of a song I heard a long time ago About a boy and a girl and an endless love You used to see her at the picture show We dreamed that it could last forever Sunny love in any weather Tell me how this story ends Did the boy ever get the girl? Get the girl. I wish I may, I wish I might. I wish upon the stars in the sky. I come on, baby, look my way. I'm trying so hard just to get your eye. I dream that it could last forever. Sunny love in any weather Tell me how the story ends Did the boy ever get the girl? Were they two gathered to the end? Were they the cutest couple in the world? Did the boy, did the boy, did the boy Ever get the girl? To convince them all So tell me How the story ends Did the boy ever get the girl The two gathered to the end Were they the cutest couple in the world Did the boy, did the boy, did the boy Ever get the girl to Javis. Uh, I love I love sitting in this seat. I absolutely love hosting the Mulberry Creek Yard because I get to sit in the studio next to these musicians and it's like instead of going to a concert and like you know being rows and rows back and you never get to talk to them, I get to sit right next to him and ask him whatever the hell I want and I get to be in this room where the music where the room where it happens. This is amazing. Derek this is fantastic. Oh, oh my guys. god. Thank you. You know what makes me sick? <laughs> People who are good at more than one thing. Wouldn't that just drive you? Because here's like with someone with a career, he's retired, and you could have done this too. You could still do this. You know that, right? Well, I'm doing it now. Oh my, I'm absolutely. Doing it right here now. So have you? So you said on Facebook earlier, this is your debut at CHMR. Absolutely. You've no, been on all the radio yeah, stations, right? Go. You've been on all the radio. Like everybody knows about you already, right? I don't think so. I think on we're radio. just. We're doing some barriers here is what we're doing. <laughs> so one we're thing that we, once in a while, uh, we guest host a show called Earshot Daily, which is part of the National Community and College Radio Association. 
and they have a syndicated show that we host that goes across the country. So we are, um, <laughs> once we get a couple of little projects off our plate over the next like maybe week or two, we're going to send <clears> the <throat> interviews with our guests in the studios off to the shows for Earshot Daily. So it'll be. So you know, the thing, the, the caveat with Earshot Daily is for anybody that's listening that plays music and wants to be on our show yeah. or wants to be on Earshot Daily or you, dear, is that they, uh, you can upload their, your music to their website. Mm -hmm. And then anybody that uses Earshot Daily can share it on their shows, yeah. and we can put it on our show. Yeah. So um, we'll talk more. So about it's the College and Community sure. Radio. Yeah. It's the College and Community Radio Association. So there's 120 over 120 stations. I don't know how many over. I would say the exact number if I knew it. Um, but there's it gives the college and community so it's like the all the stations across the country access to your music. So instead of going the FM route where you're you know beating your brains out trying to get you know paying thousands of dollars to get radio promotion because it is a business and that is a that is the most direct route to get your stuff on radio. Um, this is the College and Community Association. So there's all these places like CHMR on, co on college campuses or community stations like uh, Radio Belle Island, places like that. And so there's hundreds of them, well, dozens across the country. And they use that, um, uh, what would you call that? It's like a, a site, like a website where they collect all the music and yeah. everybody has access to it. Yeah. So the show that Earshot Daily is a, bra a branch off of that and Mulberry Creek hosts that once in a while. So that's our plans for the summer is to repurpose some of our interviews and send them up to uh, Earshot Daily and uh, get some national um, get some national coverage out there of the songs that are... The, the amount of talent here in Newfoundland, people say this all the time, true. it's not just lip service. The amount of talent, there's not enough space, there's not enough stages to really highlight how many brilliant musicians are in the province. Uh, it, well, I mean, they're all over the world. I get it. Everybody's, a, you know, a unicorn. <laughs> but in Newfoundland, this is where we are. This is, what we are, like, this is what we are, um, uh, have the So speaking, of, speaking of that, Derek, do you have any um, shows coming up? Because I know yeah. you've been playing at, like, Bridies and stuff. You've been, you, I go to Bridies a lot, uh, O'Reilly's a lot, um, and Kitty Bitty Brewery generally. Wing Night, I do a few, few tunes there. Nice. Every Wednesday. Um... Yeah, great. You know, the music scene in St. John's is unparalleled yeah. as far as I'm concerned. So someone told me last week that they had gone to Nashville, and they said from morning till night, they're constant. There's like bars with three floors that have different acts on each floor, and it's constant. Now, we're not Nashville yet, but <laughs> it's pretty close. There's the a amount lot of live, live music. music here, yeah. We went down, we walked down George Street the other night, and the amount of names that I didn't recognize on the key, on the, the, what do you call it outside? Sandwich boards? No, there's a name. There's the Mar song. Mar Mar the Marquee. The yeah. Marquee. Names on the Marquee that I didn't recognize that are people are lining up to see them and they're you know rushing up to see the latest uh, cute guitar player, cute drummer, best amazing singer, whatever. <laughs> like this, there's a whole new generation because you know we've been through. I've been through a couple of generations of those uh, of those you know hot new bands that are out and a lot of them are still playing. But there's always these new people coming up that are starting bands. In fact, grade seven. That's insane. Great a band in grade seven. Like how old are you? Twelve. So that's Henry's like that, age. Yeah, 13, yeah. That's our, our, we've got a kid that, would, you know, what grade is Henry in? He's homeschooled, so I have no <laughs> idea. Grade six. Um, but he's he's got a huge following on SoundCloud and YouTube where people are reaching out and asking him to collaborate on songs. He's 12 years old. It blows my mind. Like, oh, wow. I wish I had the courage when I was 12 or the wherewithal to say, this is a thing I love doing. Let's see what happens. And sometimes people come around to it a little bit later in life. So you're playing, um, you got shows coming up. So I say this, have you met Gary Smith? Uh, have I met Gary Smith? Not yet. Oh man. He was on our show a couple of months ago. I feel like you guys must be best friends. I don't know why. Like you <laughs> yeah. just, yeah. So we're going to have to, I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing. we're going to have to introduce you to Gary Smith because we've been talking about it now for weeks that we're uh, planning some songwriter circles to get together. I love hearing the stories behind the songs and I love going to songwriter circles and you're hearing brand new music. Now I'm not a person that if I hear something on the radio I've never heard before, it's pretty difficult to get my attention. I mean, that's just, I think, just the, um, I don't know what brain mindset that is, but I love tradi like I love stuff that's familiar to me. And I guess if you ha hear a song three or four times, it becomes familiar. Yep. But songwriter circles, I'd listen to anything. I, I went to one uh, once with uh, Baraka, who was on our show in a couple weeks. Uh, Kels Arsenault is another brilliant musician. She's on next week. We just, I love hearing the stories behind the songs. So do you have a, do you have another one that you want to play? And you can sure. tell us about yeah. where it came from or something like that? Give sure, us sure, one. sure. I'm going to play another fun one. Awesome. Sounds good. I love that you have genres of emotions. I really do. I do. I definitely do. <laughs> That's amazing. The, the first song I wrote in January, this song I wrote in February. <laughs> oh, no. 
So this is another song. It, you this know, year? Yes, yeah. You're writing fun songs like all this? the time. Yeah. Present day, yes. unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Forget Almost. songwriter circle. You need concerts. We need full on <laughs> shows. We'll open for you. We need to talk. We need to talk studio production too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This one is called Little Love Letter, and it's about a guy who has broken up with his girlfriend, and he never wants to see her again, ever. But then he gets a letter in the mail. <laughs> So we'll, does that change his mind? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. On the back, I spent forty-seven dollars short of two months' pay on a diamond ring. I don't want it back now. If you could read my mind, you'd quit wasting all my time. Oh, ooh, oh, ooh. read a love letter. Somebody who had so many sorrows to say You wouldn't spend a dime to get me on the line If you could read my mind you quit wasting all my time Oh, ooh, oh, ooh. Read a love letter Oh, ooh, oh, ooh, oh, ooh. Read a love letter Time. You're not the only one who's not okay And trying to get past what got us into this bind So, if you could read my mind You would try just one more time Oh, ooh, oh, ooh. read a love letter oh, ooh, oh, ooh, oh, ooh. Read a love letter Got a little land on a day it had a lipstick stain on the flap on the back. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I just Man, pretty fantastic. I, you know, I don't consider my I've never considered myself like a producer type or, you know, the you know, big those people back in the fifties who, you know, found Elvis. You're going places, kid. Well yeah, like chomping <laughs> on the cigar, but there was years and many years ago there was a lady who came down to O'Reilly's, Chrissy Worthman, who just like started writing music and just started coming to the open mic nights and playing and was like this stuff belongs on the radio like i just can see myself hearing it coming through the speakers like this is brilliant stuff guys. oh my <laughs> god this is like oh man it sounds like bon jovi and and uh the stuff that girls used to weep to you know they go and throw their whatever they were wearing at the time i don't know <laughs> t-shirts and snowsuits and whatnot at newfoundland yeah, shows but um but like, seriously this is really great stuff I really appreciate it. You, have any, you guys have are any, awesome. <laughs> you so are. Great. Do you have any Thank plans? You. Any plans to uh, record? Any plans for now? Um, I do have a tune on the go downtown now uh, at a recording studio, so mm -hmm. we're working through that bit yep. by bit. And yeah, I think it's time to uh, I think it's time to move out a little bit. Lean in a bit. Right? Yeah, I, absolutely. To, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, thank God you're finally doing it. You can, you know, you can only listen to your mother telling you you're great so many times. Sooner or later, you have to leave the, the living room, hey? You have to prove <laughs> to everybody else that you're a special little boy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, I've got your mom, and I'm telling you, this is fantastic stuff, and it needs to be... Like the shows that come on on the weekends, the, all, the, all the Newfoundland shows, really, really, absolutely highlight the talent that's here in Newfoundland, and it's a mixed bag. There's always all kinds of stuff, and really old stuff. People have been doing this for generations. Oh my and gosh. And the Newfoundland so shows are great, and the college and community radio stations across the country would eat this stuff up. And uh, this is really great stuff, man. Keep writing. How often? So tell me, um, tell me what happens. Like, how do you, when you, when you get an idea for a song, is it like middle of the night? 
Uh, when is your best time? Do you find that inspiration hits? Um, when I'm doing something else. <laughs> yep. Mowing the lawn, go. washing the dishes, something mindless. Yep. Uh, it never fails. You know, I'm mowing the lawn and I'm I, I'm singing a tune, and it finally it dawns on me that this it's not a tune at all. It's something new that just landed. <laughs> That's oh nice. And of course, you know, it's an amazing experience when that happens. Yeah. And when it happens, <clears throat> I can hear every note. I can hear every instrument. I can hear the harmonies. It all lands at once. Wow. So if only you could plug something in and just download you know it, it immediately. See? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's spectacular. That is absolutely spectacular. And I, my understanding is that people get together and do coal rates, and that scares the crap out of me. Because what if you got in a room and you didn't, if you, well, I mean, we could all mow the lawn together. I find it happens. <laughs> I find when there's water running near me, so whether I'm washing my hands or in the shower, that's when I get out, and as soon as I put my foot on the, on the bath mat. It's like I hear a song, and it's oh. like that's that. You're right. That's not. This isn't a song anybody's ever heard before. Now I do belt out Adele a lot in the shower, which <laughs> my family, I'm sure, loves. Uh, but it seems to happen, and it's like this is a song that's never existed before. Isn't that what an honor to receive songs that I, are I meant feel to that be? Way. They're meant to be. I different. really do feel that. They way. come through different people, yeah. and some people I think just it, it eats them up that they don't know what to do with that energy because they feel like it's a pretty weird experience. To have something come through you like that, and it's like, well, and, and for, it's, you know, for me it's personally, they're not all fun songs. Some of them are very deep. Some of Absolutely. them will rip your heart out. Like, Absolutely, they, but they just show up. Amazing. So Amazing. Uh, I find I, I find it funny sometimes when something comes back that I've written already, and it's like I'm feeling a thing, and then I have the same feeling years later, and it's like, oh, and I have a line. It's like I already wrote that. It's already on radio. It's already done, and I, it's a comfort. It seems so. What's that word? Narcissistic or self? Whatever it is, but like. Music, once it comes through you, is for everybody, including what you write for yourself. It's, you know, it's really, it makes people feel better, makes people feel less alone. Um, and I feel like not everybody wants to write songs or books or paint or all the things, the creative things people do. But if you're inclined to it, I've, I've talked, there's a lady that's a friend of ours, actually, who claims to not be a very great guitar player yet, but she's writing songs. And so she's struggling for the music, for the finger part, you know, the actual instrumentation of it. For the, so for the songs to flow through, she feels like she needs to be a better guitar player, and so she just has been writing songs, and they're gorgeous. Like, but it, I I wrote a song on piano the same way. I'm not a piano player, and so I started practicing my scales till the song was able to come out. And that might sound, I totally get it. If you're not a musician, if you're not, if you've never written a song, that might seem weird. And I thought it was weird until I turned 42. I wrote my first song at 42, and I had years of it stored up. So when it started coming, it was it that happens to me that. every time. I have to learn to play my own song. Absolutely. <laughs> I have to figure out how to yeah. play my own song. Yeah. I wonder sometimes would it be a benefit to have people in your life who can play a B-flat saxophone, who can, you know, and people that speak that language where you can say, no, I wanted to feel like, the song came on the radio the other day, and Henry goes, this is going to be a sad song, because it starts in, oh, God love him, he knew the key. <laughs> I never had perfect pitch like that. I, I mm -hmm. He knew right away, but he said, this is going to be sad, because I can tell. And hearing music through those ears is like, yeah major like there's i know there's rules about it or there's probably science to it i'm sure people who've been playing for years and years know this stuff Corey tefford is one person who can rattle off f sharp, sharp f sharp major flat with a set <laughs> suspended he yes he can yes. he's brilliant right and oh he's been playing gosh. since he was two so you know we're, we're start we're later to the game but he was absolutely and so he was a great producer to work with because he could hear stuff like with a with a scratch track it was really incredible. I do not have that ability. The scratch track is the best I can meet out, and then um, I need somebody to kind of take it from there. So, but it is great to meet other people who are, you know, with the same experiences. And I'm looking forward to the next album. I feel like you probably have three or four <laughs> in the warehouse that could come out. I uh, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And you like it? You like this? Is it? Does it feel good? Is your family noticing that you're like that? You're feeling good about all this music stuff? Uh, it's nerve wracking. Well, yeah, it's, it's pretty terrifying, actually. Why is that? Well, original tunes, I mean, you can go downtown and play Sunny Stream and get applause any day of the week, but original tunes aren't like that, right? So Yeah, there's a different audience. <laughs> like Vicky said, everybody Not that there's anything wrong with Sunny Stream. Like, it's, yeah, no, it's, I love Sunny yeah, Stream. Somebody, best, somebody heard that for the first someone time. Someone heard exactly point, that. So Exactly that. And I heard, fell in love with it. I heard a story, where were we the other night? Um, it was at a thing, it was at an event up there that the music and help put off. And somebody was talking about playing in front of a crowd. And uh, Kelly Loader, I didn't hear the story from Kelly Loader, but it was about Kelly Loader, who was playing somewhere in somewhere else, not here. And they were playing in a bar, I think her and her brother. And someone shouted at Kelly friggin' Loader 
uh, can you play something we know? Can you stop playing them made-up songs? Yeah. And she said, <laughs> yeah, like any of these songs that you've heard before weren't made up by the Eagles or the Stones or Ron. or <laughs> Like, they're all made up. And yes. they, like, this is, and I'm finding, when you go downtown playing originals, someone did say to me years ago, you can't play originals on George Street. And first of all, that's not true. Uh, but there is a, a, an audience for it. It might not be the best thing to take that down to, um, you know, a nightclub where everybody wants to dance. But there are definitely audiences for original music. And so songwriter circles, I encourage people really, um, I know there's La Nia Vanya's going on uh, in the next few weeks, and that's mostly original stuff that is brand new. Like film festivals, it's stuff that isn't on the big sc silver screen yet, but it's stuff that people are just starting up. Everybody starts up somewhere. And if you have that inclination, sometimes going to a film festival is a great idea because you see, <laughs> you see what's out there that you could probably do better. That's total, is that okay to say that? Is that too arrogant? Well, or? well you could word it like it's inspiration. <laughs> it's inspiring <laughs> in mo that motivation. the difference between what you can put on a screen or on a radio and what's out there already is that they're doing it. And so you can look at it and say, sure, I could make that home for half the price. But are you doing it? That's the question. So do it. And Brene Brown is a big motivational speaker. She does a whole thing. She's got a special on Netflix. And she says, if you're not in the ring, if you're not on, in the dirt with the blood and the sweat, if you're not in the ring with me, I have no interest in your opinion. If you're not doing the same, if you're not doing the same thing, or if you're not putting yourself out there the same way that I am, your opinion does not register. It doesn't matter. Um, but if you want to join me, we'll we'll cry together, we'll bleed together. But mm -hmm. otherwise, um, you know, opinions are like. Yeah, it's only a couple of years ago I had this same conversation with my wife Tammy, who's my rock. Mm -hmm. You know, thanks I, to Tammy for taking care of you. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, I need someone. She's perfect at it. Uh, you know, you can sit home on the couch for a long time. Absolutely. Sooner or later, you have to get out there and, yeah. and do it. Yeah. And so yeah. that's that's. There is I'm... no committee that comes and knocks on your door and says, "Hey, I heard you thought about being a musician at some point. Let's let's here's a pile of money <laughs> to start from scratch. Let's make, let's make some songs because it gets better, it gets easier. There are muscles that get stronger the more you use them, and it does get easier. I mean, I don't know if it gets easier, but you, you get better. Like your first film, everybody, first song that you put out, you're going to cringe. When you look back at it, the first films that we put out, especially, and I, I read this, I saw this a long time ago from film filmmakers, and they said the first thing you put out, first of all, you had to share it. You have to share it. Otherwise, it's just something that happens on your couch that nobody's ever going to hear. And you're going to look back at it and cringe at like, oh, this was wrong, this was a little off, or it doesn't quite, it didn't have a bridge or whatever, but it gets better. It's just more motivation. You get better at it, and you get more confident, which helps you. When you get more confident in your work, I feel like you're able to share more and you're able to be more vulnerable, comfortably, where you're not going home and curling up in a ball. And I'm still doing that. After shows, I go home and curl up in a ball and go, oh, I'm never doing another radio show. I'm never doing another show. And then after I sit on the couch for a while and did a few more dish squats, Josh will go, the uh, Lantern Festival wants us. And I'll go, okay. Blue Briggs Festival we're headed to. We're doing a show in Paradise uh, this summer. Like, it's, it happens, right? Like, you open yourself up to the universe and the universe, the path shows itself to that. you. I and totally the lightning agree. bugs, the lightning bugs find you. They really do. You find your people. Water seeks its own level, as our friend Denny says all the time. And um, this was an honor, Derek, to sit next to you. The and honor's mine, honestly. Uh, I'm a big fan of you, too, and I'm, I'm just so grateful you would include oh, me. It was divine timing. We were sitting yesterday for Derek. Happy birthday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Without, and we already mentioned this earlier in the show. We're going to tag the Newfoundland Embassy because we are more than open to having a sponsor from uh, the Newfoundland Embassy and maybe give away custard cones because Lars custard cones are, if you're coming to Newfoundland for the first time, whether it's Fabio or not. You have your Lars shirt on? Do. Of course I do. They have Lars custard cone shirts, which show the shirt. is it's, hysterical. It's epic. Hysterically funny. Look at my shirt. So this is, on, this is for the Facebook Live viewers. This is for the Facebook gotta, Live. So the, if you're on the Mulberry Creek Hour page and watch our live. Uh, if you're out driving sure. around town right now, listening to the Mulberry Creek Hour, head on down to Lara's downtown. It's in the same spot it always was. It's, of course, called the Newfoundland Embassy now, right across from Mile One, which is now Mary Brown Center. I refuse to give up on Mile One, uh, <laughs> but I will acknowledge there is another name on it. Uh, <clears throat> but Lara's Custard Cones, they're amazing. It's not, of course, someone, you talk to somebody from the mainland and they say, what's a custard cone? <laughs> right? We were on the ferry one time coming back home for a visit, and these people were loaded. They were all laying over on the, in the bar. They were laying on the benches. And uh, there were people from the mainland talking to a couple of Newfoundlanders, and they just told the story. It was it went on forever. It was they said, "Oh, what's that custard cone?" And I said, "What's that?" And I said, "Sure, that's soft serve." And they just it was constant. It felt like hours. Of course, we were we were walking around the boat with a teething baby. But anyway, I, that's when I learned that on the mainland, 
It's not sir. So all I have to say, happy birthday, Derek. Happy, happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Custard cones on us. Uh, thanks so much for coming into the show, and uh, welcome. thank you so much for being on the Mulberry Creek Hour. We are going to do some PSAs, and we're going to be back in just a few minutes. But say, everybody, make sure you check out Derek on Facebook, and look for him at the shows downtown, and look for him. Look, Keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. I think he's uh, just getting started. He's going he's, and it's going to be, man, he, it's not like, oh, I just got one song. He's ready to roll, so we're looking forward to all the stuff that you do. Thank you thanks so, so much. much. Thank you. Awesome. Josh, you got some stuff. Hey, so we'll what's, go late. We'll it's go six. Late. We're just gonna go. We're just gonna go a few minutes over. I want to get a selfie. Uh, Absolutely. Do you want to do it in front of the CHMR sign? Yeah, we'll get all three okay. of us or something. Yep. Josh, can you help with that? Yes. Let's pull that one. Oh, we can do it from here. This is gonna work. We can go over right in front of the sign. This is so much fun, you guys. Okay. Mics off there. It's the best. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Here we go. Got it. Gorgeous. Perfect. Perfect. All right. I'll send it to you too. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So you want to come in and call me? So we're gonna, we're gonna come back for just a quick second and say goodbye. Okay. I'll, I'll just make my exit then. Absolutely. Um, yes. Guys, I got about. It's so grateful. Here, so I'll walk in. Oh my god. <clears throat> Yes, thanks for coming. That was thanks fantastic. so much, Derek. Stay you good, home. You good to get we'll back out soon. of here and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Let me make sure we're not forgetting anything. Uh, is that going to be for us? Oh, my God. Yeah. Thank you very much. How awesome is he? Oh, my God. We're in the same city with these people. This is what blows my mind. We're actually in the same city. We get to live in the same place as these people. We're in here at the same time, in the same time space reality like doesn't that blow your mind it blows mine because he could have been here 20 years ago i could have been here 20 years from now but we're in the same place at the same time that's something there's something magical about that i'm going to play something before we finish up is that okay with you sure you do your psas no i don't I, I, this is done in 15 seconds what what am i going to play you back what am i going to play it's up to you what should I play? Who do you mean? Welcome back to the Mulberry Creek Hour. That was Derek Strong. How amazing is he? Oh my fun. God, he's a laugh. And we're here at the same time. I just said this on the Facebook Live, but I'm saying it again. Um, to the people at home, this is uh, spectacular that all these fireflies are in the same place at the same time. And I, I didn't want to ask him, I didn't want to put him on the spot, but um, I'd like to record some of those songs from Mulberry Creek. Right. Maybe we need maybe we need some people to uh, collaborate with and not necessarily sit in a room and write a brand new song, but maybe work on some of the stuff we've already written and polish it and add some harmonies and uh, and you know, see what comes out of it because it doesn't necessarily need to be a CD that comes out of it. Maybe it's just good feelings that make the whole world a little bit better. Did you know it makes the world better when you feel good? Did you know that? Let's I'll give you an opposite lesson. Do you know how much makes everybody around you miserable when you're miserable? <laughs> yeah. Is that a fact? a fact? So the opposite is probably true also. When you feel good, it radiates out into the world and comes back to you over and over again. That's why we have people like Derek Strong come across our path. Um, so we're going to finish up the show. This has been the Mulberry Creek Hour. Uh, I'm Vicki Morgan. Thank you, Josh, as always, for being my rock and producer. And Thank you for having me. My rocking producer and best. also... Rock <laughs> to rock to my shores and my water to my tide to my way. I don't know. You know. Are you what gonna? Mean. What song are you gonna play? I love you, Josh. I love you too. Thank, you, thank you for taking care of everything on the show and us. Um, I'm gonna just play Jimmy Glenn today because uh, that was a song that came um, when I was doing something else and uh, was received. Um, I brought it to uh, Corey Tepper's a couple of few three years ago, I guess. I sent him a scratch track, and what he turned it into was uh, spectacularly beautiful. And plays on the radio a lot. And, uh, and uh, the sentiment behind it is that, uh, you know what, love doesn't go away. And relationships change and all that stuff, but you get to keep the love. And um, so I'd love to see my little brother one of these days, but in the meantime, this is Jimmy Glenn. pictures of all you missed. You can tell me all about a boy or girl you kissed. We'll pretend like all the years have passed don't mean a thing. My baby's all named after you. Where are you, Jimmy Glenn? Did 
you save the world you raged against our simple life? Couldn't be your mother, I was someone else's wife. Watched your back as you were leaving, hair flying in the wind. Each night I checked the mailbox for the postcard, never sent. Jimmy Clinton, Jimmy Clinton, have you seen Jimmy Clinton? Jimmy Clinton, Jimmy Clinton, where are you, Jimmy Clinton? No calls or texts or letters and silence when I try. Hanging to the past you said before you said goodbye. I never really knew I held you back with my fault mind. One day you might come back and see the life you cannot find. I prayed every night that you were happy, safe, and loved. Till I stop believing someone's listening above. Still searching for my brother, Montreal was your last stop. Jimmy Glenn is out there somewhere, so where are you, Copper Top? Jimmy Glenn, Jimmy Glenn, have you seen Jimmy Glenn? Jimmy Glenn, Jimmy Glenn, where are you, Jimmy Glenn? Jimmy Glenn, can you hear me? Can this song soften your heart? Jimmy Glenn, it still beats for you. I knew it from the start. Couldn't be all that you needed, but I'll give it all I've got. Jimmy Glenn, you can come back home and give it one more shot. Watching. Make you. sure you uh, stick around, subscribe, like, comment, share it. Um, let everybody know about Derek Strong, hey? How amazing. How amazing is he? And uh, we're honored and thrilled that you're here. Thanks for being here and thanks for watching every week. And we're Mulberry Creek. If you uh, want an EP or a hat or a dishcloth, get in touch. Um, I don't know. That's, we got shirts. We got all kinds of stuff. Or if you want to be a, you need a life coach, you want to rent a friend, give me a call. I'll tell you how awesome you are. I will. Every time. Every time. I promise. Have a good week.